live. So, hi everybody. Uh, this is our first webinar, and I'm Dr. Paula Basilio, the chiropractor of my back relief clinic. And we're joined today with kind of a special guest, um, psychologist Mary Joy. So she's a psychologist in the Eastwood area, and I'm in Dulwich Chill here in Sydney. So. I started this webinar uh, for stress, and it's going to be revolving around three strategies for stress. Hey T, <laughs> hey Jim, hey Maria, give us some high fives, some love hearts, some thumbs up. Um, I want this to be slightly interactive, so if you have any questions, feel free to give us some questions. Uh, I'm going to be keeping my eye on those questions, but uh, psychologist Mary Joy is going to give us most of the information. So the reason why I started this webinar was really because a lot of my patients are obviously starting to get stressed out from this situation. So it'd be really awkward if no one got stressed out by the current situation that we're in. Um, and as I know as a chiropractor and many health professionals know, when you're stressed up, uh, your cortisol, le cortisol levels go up. And when your cortisol levels go up, your immune system goes down. So you are more susceptible to um, infections, viruses, uh, because viruses just really hate healthy bodies. If you have a healthy body, it does not thrive in it. So we're gonna try to figure out ways to uh, decrease that stress and hopefully decrease that cortisol level uh, and just help you out in your daily life. So uh, give us a thumbs up if that resonates with you. Awesome. Hey Belle, how's the kids? <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, MJ is going to take us through and unpack uh, the first of the three strategies here. So MJ, take it away. Okay. okay, thanks Paula for inviting me to this webinar. And I guess the first thing, you know, you really said that we're all feeling quite anxious. Um, there's lots of uncertainty out there. And so I guess the first thing would be to look at the things that we can control. Um, and uh, I'm going to kind of say a quote from Viktor Frankl, who survived the um, a Holocaust. So he was confined in a death camp in Nazi Germany. And what he said was, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, and that's the freedom to choose one's attitude in any given circumstances. And to me, that's really powerful because he um survived um because he didn't lose his sense of hope and that he was looking at the power you know he knew the power of choice so we can't control things like um how much toilet paper is at the shops or the sanitizers or how long um this will go on for we can't predict what will happen i mean i know for myself i'm quite anxious around you know, schools closing or, or missing out on different things, and there's that kind of sense of loss. Um, and but we can look at our attitudes, so we can have a positive attitude and maybe look for things that we can control. So maybe fun things at home that we can do, maybe a bit of dancing. Um, you know. Practicing good hygiene, of course, washing our hands, practicing um, that physical distance, um, and what you said around health, so making sure we look after ourselves, keeping active is part of that, so exercise is really important, especially now that we're probably going to be confined in the home. Yeah, um, that's, that's exactly correct. So uh, obviously we have a few patients that are in isolation, they're kind of going stir crazy. And even mm. my patients that have only spent three days at home and they come to me and they're like, oh, I'm going crazy. So because obviously the government's saying, hey, this might be a six month sin, it does give a lot of people anxiety. So like you said, we do kind yeah. of want to get our hopes up a little bit more. Uh, any of my patients that have been to my clinic, you realize that I changed the blackboard and it is about things that you can control. So I always like to think of two things. I like to say the offensive stuff I can do and defense It's kind of like a game for me. So defensively, like MJ said, we want to uh, protect ourselves. 
we want to, even my click, we ask if people have favorite shows or have uh, been overseas in the last 14 days. You want to keep your hands clean. You want to do all of that. But you also do want to feel like you can control things because this is still your body. Uh, so you do the offensive stuff. So like MJ said, stay active. So the government is still telling us to stay active, although they're getting a little bit confusing about go for a walk, but don't go for a walk, but stay at home. It is still really good for your just even your mental sanity. That's essential. Yeah, uh, we should be still walking. We should still be active because as soon as we stop being active, hey, or our moods go down. If our moods go down, we do kind of spiral into this really bad state. So I do think uh, try to focus on the things that you can control, but be aware that there are some things that you can't. Uh, uh, another thing Dr. Sunny and I uh, said, obviously in our situations, because we're health practitioners, we want to stay as healthy as possible so we can still help out all of our patients. So uh, one of the things that we promised ourselves was, hey, we're going to make sure that we sleep properly, because if we can sleep properly, we get a good night's rest, our bodies uh, can be rejuvenated for the next day, and we're not going to be so run down, yeah? So hopefully that, uh, like looking at things you can control, does help out with your stress levels. And we're going to add in a PDF file after this live uh, event of just, uh, it's like a 31 month thing, is it MJ? Of uh, starting it's a thirty day coping, yeah, so um, thirty day coping for action steps for happiness, yeah. So we will yeah. add the so, webinar uh, after this. Yeah, so every day there's something that you can do. So it'll be like uh, keeping connected or um, going for a walk. So something nice for yourself, um, and you know that that is something that you can control. Um, and uh, th there are plenty of things that we can't control, but let's focus on the things that we can control because at the end of the day, um, you, you know, there are so many things that we have, um, we can look at as being out of control, but if we just focus on that, um, that would really help us. Yeah, and I think the other thing which kind of um, goes into um, things that we can control is really looking at so the second strategy so i'll go into the second strategy is really looking at creating routines and predictability as, as much as possible trying to keep uh the old routine that we have i know things have changed and again those changes are something that we can't control but really looking at okay what is it from what i was doing before that i can keep right now do including my routine because um, it's really comforting to have a certain level of predictability, especially during anxious times, and it, it can give us a sense of security if we try to keep things um, as normal as possible. So, for example, um, I do yoga, and I can't go to the yoga studio now because um, of the physical distancing and, you know, essential services non-essential services are closed down so you know I, I go to the online yoga community um I, I don't know Paula I know you're very active is there something that you do that you know you keep those routines yeah 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 so routines if anyone knows me you all know that I'm kind of like a type a personality uh so I do like well Belle's on this call hi Belle uh, obviously, you know that I'm a, I am like lifting and uh, I like just staying active and Amber as well. Hi to Vietnam. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh, obviously, I, I, I like staying active and uh, I, I'm a routine type of person. So I'm the type of person that does have my Google calendar um, done to see. So this is my adjusting time. This is when I work on my clinic time. This is obviously when I do my webinar and it gives me pings. So uh, one real life example, obviously, uh, all my gyms closed as well. And a lot of my patients, they were kind of crying after it. And uh, it's, it's just been hard because it's kind of thrown their routine out and you don't get the equipment that you, that you have, but uh, just factoring in time, uh, where you do work out. And I find that uh, a lot of my patients find this difficult because where they're working out is also where it, it's home as well. And that's where their family is. 
So a real good example is, uh, say, with my husband and I, uh, we had to have a discussion uh, the other night on what times we have to exercise because we have a three-year-old child. So we have to go, okay, uh, on Monday morning, you get to exercise. On Tuesday morning, I get to exercise. And we just have to make that slight compromise, but still make it routine to, to be healthy and be active. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the way that I take it. I hope, I hope uh, all of the viewers uh, find that helpful, even if you're not a type A personality like me and just things in calendars. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're creatures of habit, essentially. So if, if yes. you liked going to the gym, it, it was such a devastating part of uh, this process was taking away the gym and taking away, well, what a lot of my patients felt it wasn't even from the physical aspect of going to the gym, it was just the mental relief. And if anyone asks me, that's exactly why I even exercise. Um, the, the fitness half of it is just almost like a byproduct to me, but it really does help me with just mentally just disconnecting from everything. Because if I'm lifting, if I do, if I think about something else, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna screw it up, I'm gonna hurt myself. So uh, I've always used it as a mental relief and then as, as a physical um, advantage later down the track but yeah that, that's number yeah. two cool. yeah and, and creating that routine especially if you have children is really important because children survive in routine and it doesn't have to be exercise it can be little things like waking up the same time every morning um going to bed the same time every morning so it doesn't have to be something bigger it could even just be walking the dog or going for a walk um and and um, if you do have children, I think scheduling and, and seeing how uh, all your schedules will fit in and, and then um, that will create quite a lot of um, structure in, in the home. So, um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Did I go on the third strategy now? <laughs> Let's go on to the third and final uh, way to de-stress us out of this time of uncertainty, shall we? Yeah, and, and you know, if you're actually, um, I don't know if there's a chat, you can maybe let us know what you do in your day that, to help create that kind of predictability and that structure. I mean, yeah, so we'd love to know. in this community, we want to help each other. We want to give value uh, to everyone. So even on uh, the comment section below, if you can help out everyone else and just help them out figuring out how you do routines, because not everyone's like me. So uh, sometimes people would resonate with another person and if you can help everyone out, just put it in the comment section below. Or if you just like us, just give us a thumbs mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, the last one, which is really important, and it's, it's something that we're doing right now. So we can't, we're not physically there. With each, we're not physically with each other, but we're actually connecting. And social connection is really important. Um, Stephen Porges, who's a scientist, talks about the polyvagal theory. And he talks about how, um, as mammals, we co-regulate by human connection and we connect with each other emotionally. Uh, and um, the way that you can think about this is, um, for example, um, in the zoo, you know, you have a polar bear. So Sophia Parnas, who's a clinical psychologist, uses this metaphor, and I'm going to take it uh, because it's a really good way of explaining it, is that um, when you put a polar bear in the zoo, you, you look at the environment it'll thrive in. Um, and so you'd create uh, an environment where it's, it's like the North Pole rather than a subtropical rainforest, for example. And then if you look at um, people, humans, um, they can act, we can actually live anywhere where there's oxygen um, and where there's other people. So we thrive on that connection. And if we, if we were to be put in a um, kind of a warning in a, in a zoo, for example, it's, it's, you know, we're not going to a zoo, but just an example, uh, you will put a warning do not house in isolation. Because when we're in isolation, uh, there are negative consequences for us. And right now, that's, that's really difficult, isn't it? Because we've been told to socially distance ourselves. 
and we've seen um, kind of a, a brain is always this threat response because when we see other people, and I do it all the time when I go to Coles, for example, I think, you know, who, who touched this trolley? <laughs> who, you know, whose germs am I going to catch today? I don't know if you experienced that. Um, and, and, and so we're kind of all, and, and you're probably noticing this too, people are a bit more snappy. I, I saw on the news, um, someone had attacked a nurse because she was wearing her scrubs. No. Um, so for example, and they, someone said, you know, they'll, they'll kind of, um, uh, infect other people, which, which it kind of heightens our, our stress levels when, when we feel other people are a threat to us. So even, um, connect. So connecting is really important because um, that's a, you know that's what we thrive on, um, and for a long time it, it really enhanced our survival. And even you know if we look at um, evolutionary theories where where people were um, kind of um, excluded from a tribe or a community, that that sometimes meant death for people. So it's, it's really big, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, with, with connections, obviously, we've been told to go into isolation. But in this day and age, I don't think isolation should mean that you're feeling alone. So the, this mm. is my platform for uh, any of my patients or any of the community um, uh, to help reach out and just make you feel like you're not alone in this situation. Uh, like MJ said, uh, us humans, we thrived as a species because we are so communal. I definitely don't think we're the strongest species. Uh, sometimes I don't think we're the smartest, but because we're so communal, uh, literally uh, we use- Give us some credit, Paula. <laughs> well, they use all the time. I'm not the smartest person, but we, we use all the talents and all, all of the skills that each individual has to thrive. So uh, I do think that in this day and age, we are really, really lucky. We have technology, we have Facebook Lives, we have Zoom. So even though you are technically not supposed to be face-to-face -face with people, or you keep that 1.5 meter distance, um, you don't have to be uh, alone necessarily. So uh, for example, I don't know if T's are, are seeing for example for this. Um, after this call, uh, Louise, you're there. Um, I'm going to have a wine and cheese night with, with my girlfriends and we're going to do it all through Zoom. So I really miss them. <laughs> and uh, this situation has been difficult in not being able to connect to people that I've known since I was like six. And we just find ways around it because we know there is an end date to this. And even though we can't do it now, we just find ways around to actually feel connected to other people, feel not so alone and, and still have that human interaction. So uh, that should wrap up <laughs> our webinar. Um, does anyone have any further questions uh, apart from T said that example? So uh, and do you have anything to finish up with MJ? Um. Hi, T. <laughs> um, and, and I think another example is you know, connecting through messaging or WhatsApp or Instagram, um, saying hello. Um, yeah, so I, I think um, we, we do it quite a lot. And even though we're not here together in the same space, we're still connected. And I think that's, that's really important, that feeling of, of connection and and you know, I, I'm so grateful that we have technology. Can you imagine if this happened way before internet? internet um, we would probably all lose our mind. Um, yeah, and um, I don't really have anything else to say, but um, <laughs> thanks, Paula, for having me here. Um, and, you know, we're happy to answer any other questions if you have other questions after this, this webinar. Awesome. So if, if the, this is going to keep on our page, if you have any questions or you have any questions for MJ or myself to answer, just put them on the bottom in the comments section if you're watching a replay of this. And uh, feel free to comment or ask those questions and we'll try to still get back to you even if uh, we didn't get back to you in this live event. Hey Alistair, thanks for the compliment. <laughs>
uh, all right. So hope you guys had great value out of this. I'm going to put that PDF in. Uh, I'll attach it to this group. I'll figure that out. Uh, and we'll see you next time for our next webinar. So uh, hope yeah, and let us know how you go with the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully that, that helps you with, uh, well, three strategies to de-stress in these uncertain times. So until next time, bye. Thank you for joining us.